Good afternoon. Uh, no hablo español. Comprende poquito español. Um, I thought maybe uh, when Ili Day asked me to join the event, I figured um, maybe it would be a good idea to share with you a customer briefing that I recently attended um, in North America and actually share, it's, the data has been um, cleaned, um, but share the CAST dashboard and the CAST engineering platform and, and give you a walkthrough of what was discussed in a typical executive briefing when they're leveraging CAST analytics. Um, so I will try my best to, I don't, uh, I'm not very technical and I don't do demos, um, but I'm gonna try to do both of those things. Uh, and the dashboard is actually in Spanish. So it might be really challenging since I don't really understand a lot of the words on the page. Um, so um, what I'm going to do is walk you through, so uh, let me just set up for you what has been put together, and then I will try my best to walk through it. So there's uh, an application analytics dashboard, which is the management dashboard, and that is for an enterprise customer of ours, and then I have a drill down into our engineering dashboard and for the folks uh, in the room as well as probably most of the folks from CAST, they've never seen this version of the engineering dashboard because it's in the next release. So I really pushed hard on uh, my team to, and they got it to work on my Mac. So uh, um, a lot of people went into what I'm going to present to you very quickly, and hopefully it'll all work. Um, so first, um, let me just uh, log into the dashboard. Um, so what you see on the screen is what you get when you log into the analytics dashboard um, at the highest level. And so at the top, um, you could see... Um, overall quality index. You could see some key performance indicators that they put on the top of their screen. Um, and one is technical debt, critical violations, total size of the environments, that's functional size based on function point. So this customer environment is 150 million lines of code and 380,000 function points. It's a very large global uh, telco actually. Um, and then there's a heat map of the applications um, that, I'll, that I'll get into in a minute. Um, as you go down in the dashboard, um, it gives you evolution of that same data, release over release. So if you want to drill down into the data and look at release by release information and do some comparisons, you could quickly do that. Um, and then this is the summary view. Um, the key indicators, as I mentioned, and has been talked about all morning around robustness, efficiency, security, compatibility, transferability, um, uh, excuse me, changeability and transferability. And then you could see those either as a snapshot or you could see those trending over time. So let me uh, walk you through the scenario that I was a part of. Um, the first thing was to look at their application map. Let me just describe to you the color represents the quality of that application. So the quality index is represented by the color. The size of the box is the functional size of the application based on the number of function points that application has. And again, you could look at this as a snapshot in time, or you, you can go back and look at it um, as, as evolution. As an evolution map. So it's the same applications, but now this is functional size on the last release. So the conversation um, that I listened to um, was more about the global CIO looking at 
the application map, and then the ability to drill down and have specific conversations at the business unit level. So this is a business unit view of the applications. And then there was a conversation about um, vendor management. They, they have three vendors that do all of their uh, outsourcing and development. And then they have an in-house team. And you can compare one vendor versus another. And again, the size of the box is how many function points that particular vendor uh, manages for this customer. And the color of the box is the overall quality of the work that they're doing. And so I could drill down into a vendor's applications. I could look at a very specific application that's large, that seems to be um, of, of poor quality. I could drill down into, say, efficiency, and I could look at the very specific detail around that particular application and where there's some efficiency exposures. And again, I'll, I'll drill into that in more detail. Um, we talked a lot about it, of, avoiding SQL queries inside a loop, cyclical dependencies. Those are a lot of the problems with this particular application, as you can see there. Um, then the conversation um, move to looking at applications by age. And so this particular company wanted to look at the age of the applications, group the applications by age. And then the conversation went to looking at applications that are one year old or less, so the new applications that were developed. Um, E-commerce was an application within the online group. And then... Um, from there, you could see not only the quality of that particular application, and you could drill down as I, as I showed you before, but then looking at the functional size of that application, and I know it's hard to see, but essentially this application is about 1,000 function points. And in this particular release, based on enha uh, enhanced function points, so function points that were added, deleted, or modified, you could see that this application had a significant amount of activity in this release. A third of the application was modified, a third of the application was added, and a third of the application was deleted. So a very significant release. Um, you can go to the top and actually look back to previous ver releases of that application. And what's interesting and where the conversation went is you could see that this whoever the vendor is that manages this application, they tend to work every other release on adding functionality. And then in the off release, what they're doing is cleaning up functionality that they added in the previous release. Because you could see that this release had no function points added or deleted, but a significant amount modified. Um, if you click onto the, uh, that tile, you could actually compare the, what was modified and deleted and, and added, but you could also look at whether the quality went up or down in that release. So not only did they modify about a third of the application, but the quality went down. Again, if I go back to the previous release, you could see that not only did they change, delete, and modify a significant part of the application, but they also improved the quality of the application. Um, if you want to look at evolution of that application over time, you can compare function points. And again, you can see the trend. Um, they're adding functionality every other release. They're baselining the functionality in the off release. You can see that trend just in the data. Um, so I wanted to, to walk you through that. One other point before I move over to the engineering dashboard is if you look at this specific application, e-commerce, and I clicked up on the top, now my entire dashboard changes just for that application. So I don't know if you remember any of the data before, but this application has uh, uh, 750,000 lines of code versus the 155 million, uh, or uh, 923 function points versus, I can't remember the numbers before. But what's interesting here, and this is where this company has taken this, 
is by looking at function points and quality, I can now start to use external data and I could start to look at cost per function point. And I think the gentleman from Lita this morning talked about outsourcing and buying resource at a lower cost, but how effective that resource is in terms of the function point makes a big difference. And so when you start to get external data and then you could start looking at cost over function point as a metric to manage the business, you could really start to get insight into the business. This particular vendor, actually the group CIO, uh, actually has uh, cast metrics as a key part of their MBO. So they actually measure the MBO or, or, or get paid based on the quality and productivity coming off the CAST dashboard. Um, they've been a customer for five or six years. They're an enterprise customer. They have hundreds of applications up on the, on the dashboard. This is just a, a, a slice of it. Um, so it's, it's quite an advanced customer. Um, so let me take you, so we talked about e-commerce as an application. Whoever the business owner was probably went back and sent a quick email to his project manager and said, you need to look into the e-commerce application and talk to your team. Um, what they would do is they would open up the engineering dashboard. And those are the list of applications. I would open up the e-commerce application. And this is what the developer would see or the team lead would see. On, at the engineering dashboard level. And I could break down this application and look at it by component, or I could look at it in, in the total number uh, of rules and violations at the application level. Again, you could see some highlights, transaction, uh, transactions by code type, the riskiest components in the application, the worst criteria, uh, criteria that, that have been violated, within the quality rules that I talked about earlier. And then, again, if I was a developer, I would go click onto that application. Again, the same things we've been talking about all morning around efficiency, robustness, changeability, transferability, uh, the efficiency, robustness, and uh, security are, are, are quality attributes typical to the current state of the application, and then changeability and transferability are more long-term views of that application. How easy, as Bill mentioned earlier, how easy is it to transfer from one vendor to another? Um, changeability, uh, changeability being um, another metric there, and then documentation. So there's some, some very specific violations around how much documentation per line of code and where the documentation is. And again, I can drill into that. But for, for this conversation, let me just drill into robustness because there's a, a challenge there in the score. And then you could see that if I go into the architecture, you can look down. And, and one of the things I think we talked about earlier today is cyc cyclical calls in between packages. So it's a, a pretty critical violation on the security side as well as the development side. I can drill into that. I can see that two elements violated that particular rule, and I could actually drill down into the code and look at that, uh, that element. I could also look at some of the, uh, let me go back here, some of the notes associated with that violation. Um, so let me go back one more time for you. So I go into the architecture, and then I can actually get into the source code where that violation was affected. Again, I'm using a beta version of the product, so uh, bear with me. Um, and then one other very interesting uh, point, and, and one thing that we're working with another client actually in the US is actually giving um, the, the, and this is not populated yet, but actually giving them an opportunity to populate coding guidelines and notes and they're, they're going to use it as a training platform for new developers. Um, they're insourcing all of the, the outsourced work that has been outsourced for many years. They're bringing it all back in-house. And as they bring it in-house, 
what they're trying to do is to increase the quality of the people that are delivering it. Um, so maybe that's something around robustness. Again, you can go into security. You could look at security coding violations, uh, SQL injection again, and you can drill down into the documentation or the line of code specifically. So that's a run through of kind of a day in the life of cast inside this particular customer, whether it be the the dashboard um, at the highest level, whether it be a drill down of that dashboard by application, by age, by vendor, by business unit, um, and then a drill down capability as it relates to the engineering dashboard and getting down into the, the, the specific team um, and the specific violations around that particular application. So hopefully I did the dashboard justice. I'm happy to answer questions, although, as I said, I'm not very technical. Um, but this gives you an idea of how CAS lives inside a, a mature customer of ours and what kinds of conversations it can drive in vendor management or at the business unit level. Thank you.